Hey everyone, how's it going? I'm very happy to be pinch hitting for Mike Spivey today. This is Rob Kikasi. I work uh, on Mike's team. I'm I'm part of the law school preparation team. I work as an instructor doing pre-L, uh, which is our menu of services to get students ready academically for law school. So when, when Mike brought up the issue of how to use your summer wisely to ramp up, he knew it was something near and dear to my heart, and I was happy to kind of take the question. So as, as many lawyers do, I thought about the problem kind of analytically, put into a few buckets, kind of areas to think about, and I'll just kind of run through them, tick through some ideas. I think broadly we're talking about academic preparation, kind of careers prep, and then finally getting your kind of life ready for law school, because it is this immersive experience. And I work in a, at a law school, and my students just finished their first semester of exams, and I'm struck by how much it's both a marathon and a sprint during that semester. It's kind of getting life ready for law school's big two. We'll start with that academic bucket. I think it's the one most you want to hear about. I think it's the most fraught one, frankly. Uh, there's one where uh, it might be tempting to see if you can sort of get a jump on stuff and really get ready to run into law school and know just everything there is possibly to know about, quote unquote, the law. Uh, but there are some missteps that you can make here. So it's it's sort of a high risk, high reward one, I'd say. It's probably a good idea to get mentally prepared sort of the, for the academic grind of law school. The volume of reading is often a big challenge for students, the pace of it, um, the complexity of it also. So, you know, in the summer before, I would I would sort of increase my reading load and I'd, I'd read things that are not as familiar to me or a little more challenging maybe. And then go try to teach that thing that you read to someone else, you know, so on the nonfiction side, clearly. If you write a science article, go try to teach the principles you learned or if you dove into some economics, go try to teach that to the person because you want to make sure you're processing this complex information in a meaningful way. What's a mistake is to try to call the market on how your professor is going to teach by learning all the doctrine, all the actual legal issues that you think you'll be encountering. And it's a mistake, for, I think, for a few reasons. First, different professors just have a different focus on the material. You know, for instance, when I was in law school, in civil procedure, my professor started with a structural look at the, the sort of setup of the federal courts, why the Constitution sort of provides for stuff the way it does, um, how those courts are set up. And it didn't dive into the rule book, because there actually are rules of civil procedure, that we really didn't touch on for a few weeks. And that's very different than another course, you know, at the same law school that was taught by a different professor. And who would have known that going in? So there's a real danger if you try to learn the law on this, that you'll be learning the wrong law or the wrong focus of the law. And the other piece is that at most schools, professors are really complicating how they teach the doctrine. It's not strictly here are the rules to law. Uh, It's a process of unpacking legal reasoning, legal analysis, of learning how to, quote unquote, think like a lawyer. It's something we work with students a lot to unpack what we mean by that. And they'll do so sort of in reference to other uh, kind of discipline. So some professors may take a historical focus or an economics focus or a philosophical focus, uh, legal realist focus, and you're just not going to know that. So if you dive into sort of, you know, torts in, in two hours kind of stuff, there's a real danger that you just miss the nuance that your professor's going to have. Because at the end of the day, you're not tested on what the content of the law is. I mean, you can, most, most of the exams are open book. You can walk in with the, all of the law in front of you and your classmates are going to have equal access to that law through notes, outlines, secondary sources, upper classmen that giving you sort of study materials. Everyone's going to sort of know what the law is. You're being tested on how you apply the law. And so that's the game here. And that's not something that just cramming all the information in your head before law school is going to let you do. So really upping your volume of reading is a good idea. Learning how to distill a lot of complicated information, teach it to yourself, teach it to others as a way to make sure that your processing is really important. I'd say, again, on the academic side, it's really, how are you going to get ready to apply? So how are you going to commit to doing the long-term work that's helpful and productive, like outlining for your exams, taking practice exams, in addition to the really voluminous and challenging day-to-day work, like reading cases and preparing for class and processing those lectures? So you've got to have a long-term lens and a near-term lens at the same time in law school, and that can be hard. So think about kind of how you're going to set up your time to do that. Think about how you operate in an environment with very little formal feedback. For the most part, most law schools are structured that the, the, the exam is blind graded at the end of the semester, and it's really the only time that you know how you've performed on that one exam. There are not midterms or quizzes or check-ins or in class or anything like that. So how do you operate in that environment? And if you need feedback, what are your channels going to be? You know, hint here, you really should involve practice tests and practice problems. You need to know how you're doing throughout the semester so that it's not a total surprise when you take the exam. So then we move to the careers bucket. I think this is really a place where you can actually move the ball quite significantly, actually. And it's, a, it's an issue I see with some students coming in that they're not ready for the pace at which the job search runs. 
you know, we're not quite at the business school model where people come in really pretty sure about what they want or, or kind of ready to jump on the, the job search curve. But the market certainly seems to be moving faster and faster each year. It's especially true in the big law world, you know, at the large defense firms that do, a heavy, do the heaviest recruiting for law students. So in some cases, you're simultaneously doing 1L and 2L recruiting, which can be a real challenge and, and a bit of a surprise, as I said, to students. So what I would do uh, the summer before, this is something we work with too when we coach students on career prep at Spivey, is uh, really get to know practice areas. That's sort of the area of the law that a lawyer might practice in antitrust or energy or health care. Litigation is sort of a broader bucket. You might have different disciplines within that. Start to know those practice areas, um, what some of the issues are, what some of the realities of the jobs are. It's sort of the way that, that in, in the recruiting context, you, you divide up the world in a meaningful sense. Um, have a sense of where they're practiced, right? There might be a lot of energy work at Firm X, but the truth is a lot of it's coming out of their Houston office and not, say, out of their Miami office because of just the way that the industries are structured. But if you can be, become smarter about that, it's going to make your life a lot easier once you get to law school if you have a sense of what you want to practice and where. Um, I would also get comfortable talking to lawyers. It's a very network-driven business, and that can mean a lot of things, right? It can mean going to a cocktail reception and making relationships, but it, it often means just sitting down one-on-one with a lawyer and really picking their brain about the course of their career and what they work on, how they got there, exit opportunities. It's a really important source of education for yourself about the legal industry, and it's a really great way to stand out in recruiting if you can develop an ally and an organization who's going to kind of watch for you as you go through the application process. So networking is going to be key. Become comfortable talking to lawyers before you get to law school. And then one more thing on the career sense. Some of you are are gearing up for this search and are thinking about it already. I know the 1L summer position is at most law schools around the country really a public interest summer for a variety of broader structural reasons in the the legal labor market. Um, So if you go in with blinders on that you're definitely going to be doing a 1L summer at a large firm, you might want to right-size expectations. There are certainly jobs out there. But um, if, it's, if you go for broke on that, you might miss some really great opportunities in the public interest where more of the jobs are coming from. So the final bucket uh, I would think about is just sort of getting ready for life. Uh, it's a big move often. And it's, it's as I said, this immersive experience, a sort of sprint uh, marathon hybrid. So clear the decks if you can before starting up in law school. You know, figure out what bank you're going to go to. Where's the grocery store? You know, how are you traveling within the city? Do you feel acclimated? Don't leave that to chance or to last minute so that you're starting to get prepped on that while the rest of your class is diving into cases. Do you have a routine regarding self-care? Do you know how you're going to de-stress? If you're a fitness buff, when are you going to find time for the gym? If you like to paint or dance or whatever it is, when are you going to find time for that and really commit to it? If you tra- treat law school like a bit of a job where you're working a certain set of time, you're finding your downtime, it usually is a lot easier to structure what is otherwise a very unstructured experience often. What's your strategy going to be to making new friends and joining groups? Is that going to be a priority? Is that going to take a little bit of a back seat? Uh, you know, varying schools of wisdom on this. It probably really depends on you and your goals here. Again, something we work on, folks, when they come through to do pre-L work with Spivey. But sort of thinking through that and having a bit of a plan is really important. Clear the decks on whatever you can beforehand um, so that you're not stressed once you do get there. So that's it. Those three buckets, um, you know, and this is the, the, the sort of priority you put on each bucket is going to really depend on what your background is. Um, and what your goals are. But those are some that I would give uh, a fair amount of thought to in, in the months leading up to law school, you know, spring and summer before, so that you're ready to jump in on day one and, and go for success. Thanks so much for listening. It's been great. Take care.